this video, I want to show you how you can create heat maps or kernel density maps in ArcMap. When and why would you want to do this? One is when you have confidential point data. This is data that is an address or coordinate based that's confidential, such as patients' addresses, and you want to convey the aggregate spatial distribution of those data points, but without revealing individuals' locations. Another reason you might want to do this is sometimes choropleth maps, those graduated color maps, may not be the most effective way to reveal the kind of density or clustering that you want to show, and, and there might be more effective ways. So I just want to show you this because it might be another option for you in working with your data. Uh, I'm going to show you on three different kinds of data. And so pull up the first one here. The first one here is, is what we call the John Snow cholera data. This is uh, based in you know, uh, London a uh, century or more ago. And the blue dots are cholera deaths. And each dot, it's already, these dots are actually a shape file of dots. Each dot represents a particular count of deaths due to cholera, right? You can see that variable count. And then we have uh, water pumps represented by the green spheres. And then the background is just a, a TIFF file showing the, the streets. Now, what if this uh, it's one thing about these these blue dots, even if these aren't confidential, given this is historic data, it can be a little hard to um, see the density or clustering. We can change it if I go to quantities and graduated symbols and set that to count. That helps us get a little bit further down the road, but it's, it can still be a little bit difficult. And, and similarly, if this was data that was confidential, we wouldn't be able to convey this in a map, particularly to the public. So what's an alternative? And the alternative it is to create a heat map that looks like this. This heat map is based on this point data. But what heat maps do is they take into account each dot, and that each dot is weighted by a certain value, in this case, the number of deaths. And then each dot looks out to see if anybody nearby, are there other dots, and how big are those dots? And then if there's a, a clustering, you're going to get a hotter spot. Okay, And if there isn't, then you're going to get a cooler spot. Okay, and that's what this uh, kernel density map is meant to illustrate. So how do we create that? And you'll notice as we do that, of course, and we take away the dots, you actually provide some degree of um, uh, confidentiality for particular individual data points. Okay, so how do we turn, let me just turn those back into just basic dots. How do we turn these basic dots into that heat map? But the first thing you want to do is you want to go to Customize, and extensions. And you want to make sure that you're checking the spatial analyst box. Make sure that that's checked. Hit close. And then you go to the search tab over here and search for kernel density. Okay. Click on kernel density. And the input point feature is the thing, the dots that you want to turn into a heat map. And these always have to be dots. Okay. We'll talk later about how these can't be polygons or census tracts, things like that. You have to be dots, points. So cholera deaths are the things. Now the population field is if we want to weight each dot by a certain value. And in this case, the number of deaths or the number of the count of deaths would be an appropriate weight um, to consider. Now notice the output here says output raster. All the data we've been working with to date has been what we call vector-based data, polygons and the like. This data, the, what we're going to create with the heat map are going to be raster data, which are sort of a grid of pixels. And that's quite different. And what we have to do is make sure we navigate to our folder. And I'm going to just, with raster data, you don't want to just save it into a folder like normal. You want to create one of these tuna cans, as I call them, and save the uh, raster data into that tuna can. So I'm going to create a tuna can. I'm just going to click here. And I'll just call this demo1. And let me go back down and then go back into my heat map. Uh, there's my demo one. I'm going to double click to get inside of it now. And then what's the name of my file? Now, I usually name my files based on the radius that um, I'm asking ArcMap to look out from each dot. Now, the thing about looking for uh, what's the radius one should use is really a guessing game with ArcMap because it's based on what's the nature of data that you're playing around with. Um, it's quite complex. So for this one, and I'll provide this with you, the radius that we want to use is 50. Okay. And you'll see what that means. So I'm just going to call this snow 50. And in the search radius, again, each dot is supposed to 
take into account itself, its weight, and then is it close to any others looking out a certain radius. And I'm going to set that to 50. Now, to be honest, it's really hard to figure out what the search radius should be. You'll see that this varies dramatically over the cases that I'm going to look at. You have to kind of play this high-low guessing game and kind of zero in on what it should be. Um, and it really means going from 0 0.01 all the way up to 100 sometimes and just sort of narrowing in to try to find the right radius. Okay, But for this, we'll just go with 50. And once you hit OK, everything else will be standard setting. Get a little kernel density action here in the bottom right. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to get rid of this old one. And you get a box that looks like this. Okay. Now, if you want to move this up and down, if you need to, you always want to click on that button and you can move this up or down. Now, obviously, we want to get rid of this blue box, but I'm going to double click on this. Symbology. And I'm going to leave it at nine classes. You could try seven and so on. I'm going to switch this to blue to red, so kind of that cold to hot kind of thing. Now notice if I hit apply, I've got this new color scheme, but I've still got this blue box. I can get rid of that by double clicking on that particular box and doing no color. And if you were to look closely, you'll see that this is kind of pixelated. So the way do we get rid of that is to click on display and in this drop down do by linear interpolation and that smooths things out a bit. And the last thing I like to do is usually switch this to maybe like 35% transparency. Okay. And now if I were to get rid of my specific dots, I'm left with just a heat map with the water pumps represented. Okay. And that'll tell us where the greatest concentration or density of deaths from cholera is located. Okay. So that's how you do that one. Now let's go to another example. I'm going to look at Chicago. So this is, these are census tracts that have their centroid in the Chicago city boundary. Um, and these red dots represent homicides from between 2001 and 2013. And each dot is a single homicide. And again, it's, it's already a shape file, but represented by dots. And you can see they have addresses and stuff and latitude, longitude. Um, this is public data, so it, you know there's no point in sort of disguising it. The question becomes, is this the most effective way to represent the data? Now, if I were to shade this underlying map by, and I don't have any ACS data in here, so I'm going to just maybe shade this by female-headed households with children. This is the number of households over the total number of households. That's a pretty good correlate of poverty rate. You can sort of see that this might be an actually a, a pretty effective map, right, with each dot representing a single homicide. Um, pretty effective map showing its relationship to other ones. So I may not need to do a heat map, okay? But again, what if these dots were something where this was confidential data? How would you deal with that? Okay, now this data is already in point form, so we can actually turn that data into something that looks like this. Now, I'm actually not a big fan of putting a kernel density heat map over a choropleth map, right? It'd be fine if I just left this as generic, a uh, generic gray background, for example. That's fine, but trying to you know manage the colors of the heat map versus uh, a choropleth map underneath that is disguised a little bit, even with this being transparent, it's just a little bit too much. Okay, but there might be reasons just to do a choropleth map again to show the concentrations. So again, the way we do this would be to do search kernel density because we already have our point data, which are the homicides. Population is going to be left to none here. We actually don't have any other points. It's year, latitude, longitude. Each dot is its own number, so we don't do any population there. Output raster, I'm actually going to put this in the same tuna can. If, if I didn't have it, I'd go in here and I would call this chai ham. Now, what should be the radius that we use. And I use this in the name too. This one, the data is very different than the Jon Snow data. Here, the nature of our data is going to require a radius of 0.015, but I'm actually going to show you what it looks like. What if I just did a radius of one? Okay, When I really know ahead of time that it should be 0.015 because I've been playing around with this. So let's just look at see what a, a radius of uh, one would actually look like takes just a few minutes for the kernel density to 
execute. And then we get it. And see, this is what happens when you have a radius that's too big. Now you can imagine, you just get this big you know, bullseye. You can imagine if I had started at 50, <laughs> I might have then gone to t down to 20 and then I'm done, done to one. And then I, then I know that I need to go even further. Um, so that's how you have to play that kind of high, low guessing game. So let's go back to the kernel density and try this again. Demo one, let's do chai hom 015. And then I know that that's my 0 0.015 search radius and hit okay. And we'll wait for that to execute. Okay. And then, you know, you can start to see even before you start to uh, adjust the settings that this looks a little bit better. And you might have to tinker very small movements to you know get the kind of precision that you're looking for. So uh, it's a little bit of um, trial and error to find where you want to go. Okay, so I would just double click on that. Symbology, blue to red, get rid of that top one, right? We're starting to make some progress. And then display by linear interpolation to smooth it out. You can see that pixelation. Hit apply, and then let's just do 35% transparency. Okay. Now again, I might want to try 0.01 rather than 0.015 to see if that gives me a little bit more precision to really try to identify the key hotspots. For example, this one right down here, I might have missed that if I was only looking at the dots, right? You fail to recognize that this is a, a particularly strong hotspot if you're just looking at the dots. So you might see these things as complementary. Maybe the dots help, but you have a hotspot map, um, a heat map in addition to it. Okay. Now one last thing I, I didn't show with John Snow data, but these numbers are I wouldn't try to interpret them, right? They're just they're kind of complex. But what I would do instead, if I were to include this as a legend, is I would do two slow clicks and just replace the bottom and the top with low density and high density. And then in the middle, two slow clicks and just get rid of them. That way you can have a legend so people know that red is hotter, greater density, greater concentration or clustering, um, and that anything toward the blue end or no color whatsoever is lower density. Okay, So that's how you can work with the, um, the legend. Now one last final example. What if you have data here? I've got Denver Aurora area uh, by census tract, and I've got a core. I've got a core plus map here of poverty rate. Now the thing about looking at poverty rate, that might be the variable of interest, right? But one thing I can't tell from this data is what about this tiny little tract here? It's got the same rough poverty rate as far as I can tell um, as this tract over here. But do they have the same number of poor people? What if I'm, I'm interested not just in the poverty rate, but I'm interested more in the, the number of poor people? Now, on the one hand, I'm, in this data, I do have the number of poor people. It's pop below. I could do a choropleth of that. And it looks a lot like the poverty rate. OK, maybe that works. But the other thing I can do is actually create a heat map of the number of poor people in each census tract. But of course, I can't do a kernel density map based on these polygons because the kernel density function requires point data. So how do I get my census tracts shrunk down to points? And there's a function for that, and I already have it actually. So here, each of these dots is the geographic center point of, the, of their respective census tract. And in fact, they have all the data that the regular polygon census tracts have just shrunk down to their geographic center point. So these points I can use to create a, a kernel density map. But how do I even get those? So this is a two-step process. First thing is instead of kernel density, I'm going to search for feature to point. And in ArcMap, features are things like census tracts or counties or states. Okay. So I'm going to turn my features, my census tracts, in this case, my den baked. I'm just going to use the first one, doesn't matter. And I'm going to turn them into points. Now, I'm not going to put those in my uh, tunic hands. It's probably fine if I did. 
but I just prefer to keep my shape files, my because this is a shape file. I'm going to keep it outside of the tuna can and just put my raster uh, data sets in my tuna can. Um, I'm just going to call this 10 points 2. Go ahead and hit save. And there they are. So those points are nothing more than your census tract shrunk down to their geographic center point. And now we can use those dots to create a heat map like this. Okay, so the same process holds. Just go back to search. This time we'll do kernel density. Link for that to come up. All right, so the input is my den points two. It's always going to be looking for point data. And then the population field, in this case, I want to do one that's based on the number of poor people. So pop below is the number of people below the poverty line. And now we have to do, save that output raster into our tuna can. And for this one, what should be the search radius? Well, I'll just tell you, after some playing around, um, you're going to want to go with about, I don't have it listed here, about 0 0.025. So I'm going to call this denpov025. And again, you'd have to play around. You could start at 20 and then try 0 0.01 and then move up and, and down to find that. So, But for, for track level data, for a city level, you're probably going to go with maybe about a 0 0.025. Again, you're going to want to play around with that a little bit to find just the right degree of specificity that you're looking for. You're always trying to find something that's faithful to the data, the representation of the data. Okay, it takes a little bit when that pops up. Symbology. Get rid of the bottom blue or the top blue on there. Display by linear interpolation and 35% transparency. And now we've got that. And again, I wouldn't put it over a Cora Pleth map with graduated colors. I would just let it sit over a, a regular map, right? Again, where you want contrasting colors. So I've got my regular map. I just set it to, to a light gray. Okay. It wouldn't make much sense if I set it to something like this. So you get a nice basic contrast. Okay. And then you're able to zero in. Now again, here's this rather dense hot spot. A lot of density of poor people there. Would we have noticed that based on any other data? I mean, if I were to size these dots by graduated symbols by pod below, I might have seen that. Right? Maybe, right? It, it works with data, but it's not always going to work. And so I wanted to give you another option. And of course, if this data, if this point data, if it was more than just you know census tract center points, if it was actual people's addresses, you'd have to turn them into a heat map of some sort or find another way of embedding them more generally in the census tracts, which there are ways. But Okay, so that's how you uh, work with kernel density and heat maps.